In May 2021, Thomas Tuchel and Chelsea won the Champions League. Just four months after taking over the stuttering side, he led them to the biggest trophy in European club football. It's a huge step to arrive in the final. It's an even bigger one to, to bite your way through. In just four months, he had made everyone forget about his predecessor, Chelsea legend Frank Lampard. Why Chelsea? Why not? Four months in which Chelsea beat a string of top teams in England and beyond. And they did it without conceding a single goal against any of them. He's an outstanding, outstanding coach. I'm the best trainer in the world. Thomas Tuchel never had Klopp's charisma, Guardiola's intellectual aura, or Simeone's raw energy, but he learned from all of them and now stands at the top of the coaching pyramid. What makes Tuchel tick? And how did he become the best coach in the world? To understand Thomas Tuchel, we have to go back to 2009. Michael Jackson had just died. Barack Obama was the new president. Yes, we can. Thank you. And a 35-year-old inexperienced youth coach took over at Bundesliga side Mainz. A club where another exciting young coach, Jürgen Klopp, had started his own career. Es gibt auch Schlimmeres, irgendwie als mit, mit Jürgen Klopp verglichen zu werden. Know each other for a long, long time. We have kind of a, a common history, if you want. He worked for Mainz.
Wehr. But this is also one of Tuchel's biggest problems. To him, players have always been a means to an end. Pawns in his 4D chess game, who he can move around at will. And that means sometimes the human touch is missing. Tuchel is a driven personality, a perfectionist. His expectation of consistent excellence creates friction with some players. One former player said, what he did to me was 100% bullying. He's a dictator. You'd never hear a player say that about Klopp who has always worked hard to get the whole squad on board with his ideas. Tuchel has the edge on Klopp tactically, but not when it comes to the personal side of the job. Tuchel has never escaped the Klopp comparisons. In fact, he encouraged them. For example, in 2015, when he moved to Dortmund and, just like in Mainz, succeeded Klopp. It is völlig selbstverständlich for me mit der größtmöglichen Anerkennung und Wertschätzung diese herausragende Trainerleistung von Jürgen in den vergangenen sieben Jahren anzuerkennen. The cerebral, meticulous perfectionist Tuchel took over one of the most emotional clubs in the world. This was just before his first training session. He was happy to get his hands dirty and set things up himself, a job usually passed off to an assistant. Tuchel planned every session in exact detail, right down to the centimeter. And it worked. Tuchel won more points per game than any other Dortmund coach ever. And in each of his two years with the team, he led them to the cup final, winning it once. He also achieved the best points total of any second place. often after games for dinner too. Another situation where Tuchel could learn from the very best. It is known that uh, Pep Guardiola is also a part of a leader. And that was very, very interesting for me, because I love the interaction with such personalities, of course, and I also look for it. And that's a way for me to be better. Tuchel also improved his players, the likes of Mats Hummels, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Henrik Mkhitaryan and Marco Reus were at their best in his reign. Tuchel moved Dortmund away from Klopp's heavy metal football to a flexible possession-based game, where the man with the ball always has multiple options. But players are people too, and football doesn't always make sense. Tuchel learned that lesson on the 14th of April, 2016. It was the Europa League quarter-final second leg. Tuchel's Dortmund met Klopp's Liverpool. With an hour played, Dortmund led 3-1. Liverpool needed three goals to progress. And then it happened. After the Reds pulled one back, Jurgen Klopp ignited the whole stadium. It was just like um, everybody believed here in this lucky punch. With the fans roaring them on, Liverpool pulled off a miracle, scoring the winner in the 91st minute. It is perhaps the greatest comeback that Anfield has ever seen. The game was to be a turning point in Tuchel's career. If you expect an explanation, I'm... I probably have to disappoint you because, uh, I mean, uh, an explanation would mean that things are kind of logical or, or tactical. But that's football. Sometimes logic counts for nothing, and belief, desire and team spirit decide games. Five years on, Tuchel tied all the necessary components together to win the Champions League. Klopp had showed him the way. But in between, there was another defining episode for Tuchel. Continuing with our breaking news, this coming out of Germany. Police in Dortmund have confirmed that at least three explosions have occurred. On the way to a Champions League quarter-final game, 
Dortmund's team bus was bombed. One player, Mark Bartra, was badly injured. The team was in shock, but after discussions between club bosses and UEFA, the game was only delayed by one day. Dortmund lost and afterwards Tuchel leapt to the players' defence. Nach diesem äh, Sprengstoffanschlag in, äh, war im Grunde nur die, nur die Entscheidung, könnt ihr eigentlich noch spielen? Also wir wurden im Grunde, hatten das Gefühl, dass wir behandelt werden, als wäre eine Bierdose an unserem Bus geflogen. Was this Tuchel's human side on show? Or was he putting on an act? There were rumors that Tuchel was happy for the game to go ahead when it did. He also allegedly criticized his players, saying, I'm supposed to beat Bayern with these wimps? His relationship with the club bosses broke down. Even before these events, it seemed like his my way or the highway approach didn't fit. Dortmund CEO Aki Watzke emphasized that leading the club was about not just results, but also fundamental values like trust, respect, communication skills, authenticity, and identifying with each other. All things that made Jurgen Klopp a perfect fit. But Thomas Tuchel, not so much. So Watzke decided to let one of the best coaches in the world go. But he wasn't out of work for long. Merci pour votre présence aujourd'hui. Je suis très heureux d'être ici comme entraîneur de ce club exceptionnel. At Paris Saint-Germain, a different challenge altogether awaited Tuchel. How do you turn a collection of world-class players into a team? But Tuchel showed he was the right man to lead the superstars. Desde a primeira conversa que tivemos né, ano passado, né, percebi o com era é, vencedor, né, o com ele queria estar tá cada vez né, melhorando, mostrando a sua melhor versão. Tuchel had a successful stint in Paris, winning his first 14 games in a row for a league record. In his first two seasons, he won two league titles and the French Cup, and finished runners-up to Bayern in the Champions League. But losing that final went down badly in Paris, and after the team started the following season poorly, Tuchel's relationship with the media became more and more strained. Vous montrez moi une équipe qui joue chaque chaque match 400 buts, c'est pas possible. Mais c'est pour moi c'est clair que vous trouvez toujours un point. Ah, on cherche le négatif, il n'y a pas de problème. On a gagné. Et je ne vais pas faire une excuse. The club's owners wanted more, and a falling out with sporting director Leonardo led to Tuchel's dismissal. His old employers didn't seem surprised, with Dortmund's Vatska saying. Thomas is a difficult person, you can see that in Paris too, but he's a fantastic coach. The numbers back that up. At all of his clubs, Tuchel has been a success. At PSG, he won three of every four games. In his first half season at Chelsea, he won two points per game in the toughest league in the world. And his old sparring partner knew what to expect. I saw already some routine, some fundamental, some process that I remember when I faced them in uh, Borussia Dortmund. Thomas Tuchel learned from the best until he became the best. It will be tricky to place him like it always was tricky because he's a good one. That Tuchel is good should be clear to every football fan by now. But his obsessive, demanding nature means he's never satisfied even within minutes of victory. I don't want to rest, I want the next one, I want the next success and I want the next title and I want the next, I want the next process on the same level of quality, of consistency uh, and I want to be a part of it and I demand to be a part of it. Thomas Tuchel's personal...